Today we're talking about aggravated assault in Arizona. This is a very common charge. The statute itself is very, very bulky. It has a lot of language. And so we're gonna break it up into a couple different videos. Today we're gonna to be talking specifically about the first part of the statute that details different types of situations, different type of conduct that will take a regular assault charge and aggravate it. Aggravation means it gets worse. It's taking it from a lower level offense. It's now aggravated. It's now a lot more severe. It takes it from a simple misdemeanor charge up into a felony. And there are different ways that this can happen. As I said, the statute's very long, but today we're gonna to talk about seven different ways that you can be charged with aggravated assault. So it's a regular assault, plus some other factors that aggravate it. So let's look at the statutes. So if you wanna look this up, you can look up regular assault, it's 13-1203, that's regular assault. The aggravated assault is just one statute down, 13-1204. And so let's start with the regular assault. So I have another video about this, but just a quick refresher. Regular assault occurs when there is actual physical injury. So one person causes physical injury. It can be intentional, it can be reckless, there are different ways that that can happen, but if there is a physical injury, one person causes another physical injury, that's the first way you can get an assault. The next way, you don't actually have to cause the physical injury, but if you put a person in apprehension that imminent physical injury is going to be coming their way, you can also be charged with assault. So you may not actually have any physical contact, but if that person, it's reasonable for that person to fear it, that it's gonna be coming quickly, you can be charged with assault for that. And finally, if there's any touching, so it may not actually have to cause an injury, but if there's any physical touching that's meant to uh, injure or provoke or kind of uh, harass that person, that's the other way you can be charged with assault. Again, these are all misdemeanor assaults under 13-1203. If you have all of these factors or one of these factors and one of, this other, one of these other different situations occur, so, so there's some additional conduct it will take it from a regular assault into an aggravated assault. So let's look at what these first seven are. First and foremost, and this is probably one of the more common types of aggravated assaults, is if an assault occurs and there is serious physical injury that occurs on the person who was the victim of the assault. Serious physical injury is kind of vague, and so we have to look to a different statute, the definitions section under Arizona criminal law, which is 13105, it defines what serious physical injury is. And it is a serious physical injury. So what the, what the definition says, it causes a substantial risk of death, either a serious or permanent disfigurement or a serious impairment of a person's health, bodily organs, or limbs. So this is breaking something or actually physically causing gouges or doing something that causes somebody to be substantially injured. Serious physical injury, it's defined here and it's pretty detailed. And it's, it's not talking about scrapes or bumps and bruises. It's a serious disfigurement. It's a loss of a limb. It's a serious injury to an organ. It happens when there's a, you know, a major fight, somebody really gets beaten up, and uh, that, that would probably reach that level. So that's the first way that a regular assault can be aggravated. The next way is if there's anything happening here and the, the additional conduct involved using a weapon or a deadly instrument. So a weapon, of course, would be a knife or a gun or a baseball bat or something like that. But we've also seen it in situations where somebody used a lamp or somebody used a chair or something like that. It would constitute a dangerous instrument because of the bluntness of the object or because of the facts of what actually happened that will elevate it from a regular assault to an aggravated assault. So a deadly instrument or a dangerous, I'm sorry, dangerous instrument or a deadly weapon. The other way that you can get it, number three here, is where there's substantial disfigurement, but it's temporary. So if somebody's seriously injured, they get, you know, they have to get stitches, they're injured, they're, they're disfigured, but they're gonna eventually heal, that's gonna rise to that level. Similarly, if a person loses uh, the, the function of a body part or an organ, or if there is a fracture. So if a bone is fractured or ribs are fractured or something happens to the body that is a, a more substantial, but it doesn't rise to the level of say a serious physical injury because it's not permanent, but it's temporary, but it meets these criteria, that's also a factor that's gonna aggravate it into an aggravated assault case. Number four is when the victim is bound or is substantially restrained so that they cannot resist. So if a person's tied up, if a person's kind of locked in a certain position where they can't actually fight back or they can't escape, they can't get away, that's gonna elevate it to a aggravated assault charge. Similarly, 
Number five is when a person enters a private residence. So if a person enters into a residence or a location where they're not supposed to be and they have intent to commit the assault, that's gonna aggravate it. They wanna protect the home. And if somebody enters into that residence with the intent to commit an assault, it's not just gonna be a simple assault. It's going to be an aggravated assault because a person has to make a volitional act to actually enter into a residence. Number six, if the defendant is somebody who is 18 years or older, so this should be here. If a defendant is 18 years or older and the victim is under the age of 15, that's gonna be aggravated. So this is an adult uh, who's committing an assault on somebody who's under the age of 15. It's not just gonna be a simple assault, even if it is just a you know, minor physical injury or some, some, uh, some level of touching. If it happens where there's that big differential be between the ages, between the person who's alleged to have committed the assault and the person who's the recipient of the assault, that's gonna be aggravated. And finally, in this video, we're gonna talk about the violation of an order of protection. So if there's a court order that somebody has taken out against somebody else, so a court order, an order of protection is an order from a court, from a judge, it's signed off on, and it basically precludes somebody from having contact with somebody else. So it's saying, Person A has an order of protection against person B. That means person B cannot contact person A, cannot go to certain locations. There's not to be any communication unless it's facilitated by the police, these types of things. So if person B violates that order and actually breaches an a, a, a active, valid order, they, and they go to that person's residence or they meet them at their work or they go someplace where they're not supposed to be in violation of that order, and they commit an assault, it's not gonna be a simple assault, it's gonna be an aggravated assault. So these are the different ways that you can get an aggravated assault. As a reminder, you have to take a regular assault and add some sort of aggravating factors here in order for it to elevate it into a felony. There's gonna be many more videos about aggravated assault because it's a big, long statute. The next video, we're gonna talk about the different victims and what protections are in place to make sure that there is no assaults occurring on them. And then we'll talk about some of the penalties and some of the defenses, but this is a brief overview on how aggravated assault works. If you have been charged with aggravated assault, somebody you know or somebody you love has been, give our office a call. We offer free case evaluations. We'll have you come into our office. We'll sit down. We'll make sure we understand the facts of your case, specifically what happened. Make sure that we can put together a strong defense for you so that you're not convicted of aggravated assault. Free case evaluations. Give our office a call. We look forward to speaking with you. Thanks for watching.